roll call, Madam Clerk. Ms. Michelle. No. Mr. Fife. No. Ms. Worthen. No. Ms. Lewis. No. Mr. Murphy. No. Ms. Priestley. Yes. Ms. Winter Kern. Yes. Okay, it's four yes, three no. The vote is four yes, three no. That moves to legislative. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it failed. I'm sorry, we need five. I'm sorry, it failed. Now we are on, we're still in the second round to send it to council. Eight, nine, three, and four have already taken their time. Um, five, two, and seven still have time for the second round in council. Is there anybody who would like uh, to take their second round opportunity to speak? Yes. yes. Um, you've already had your uh, opportunity, um, but Councilwoman uh, Winfrey Carter, you have an opportunity. Thank you, Madam Chair. Like I said, first, this did not go through council. This is not a pressing issue no more than anything else. I mean, this did not go through committee. We got to stop circumventing the process, and we got to start sending things through committee because that's where we do the work. That's where we do the work. That's where we discuss the issues. Not here in special affairs. Special affairs is designed to stop resolutions through to get more information before we vote on the resolution, before we send it to council. Not to do the work. So I will not be voting on this resolution. I don't agree with this resolution. And it's not that I don't, um, I'm not concerned about the safety of the residents. But this is ridiculous. This is poppycock. So say what you need to say about whatever. But I will not be supporting this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. The only person left is um, two and seven. Um, are you going to take your opportunity to speak? Madam Chair. You have the floor. Thank you. Vote it up for now and move on. Don't agree with it, just don't agree with it. But yes, yeah, this is to keep order in our chambers. Unfortunately, we have people that are not for order. We have people that like when people yell out. We like when, when, when things are chaotic. Um, please pause the time. What's your point of order, Mr. Pfeiffer? Um, Councilwoman in the second ward, please refrain from speaking to people's mo motives. Continue. Sure. So, people yell out and council members don't say anything. Chaos happens, people don't say anything. We have people interfering with the police during the job. We have people that, I mean, tripods in the way, people recording the turn. We have, as one councilwoman would say, lawlessness. This is an attempt to get a grasp on this. As we talk about what, you know, um, Saginaw, Detroit, what they're doing, what they're not doing is this kind of chaotic foolishness that we have employed in these chambers. What they're not doing is attacking council members. What we, what we don't have is them attacking other audience members. What we don't have is the same level of dysfunction. That's what we don't have, again. This is an attempt to move this council in the right direction, to restore order in these chambers. So individuals that may have a handicap, they may feel comfortable coming into these chambers and not tripping over a tripod or a, or a set of cords on the side of the room. We have people that are not gonna have cameras in their face as, as they're trying to move throughout the chamber. Hopefully this will be a day when Residents will not be intimidated and call names, so therefore they don't want to come down here and not practice their democracy. Hopefully this will be that new day. And with this resolution, it is just establishing much needed rules and 
and guidelines needed in these chambers. And I will be remiss not to stand for order and rules and guidelines that are gonna guide this body into, into a new day. Because it is a new day on council. Hopefully everyone can recommit to moving this city forward for real. Not just in, in words, but in also in deeds. Let's vote for order. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, seeing as how everyone has had an opportunity to speak, I will go ahead and take my time once again. Um, I, know, I noticed we mentioned Paul again, but Paul moved himself. When people were complaining about Paul's core being a trip passer, when people were complaining about uh, his many cameras, Paul took it upon himself to move himself. And so now that we're saying what we'll do to make this easier and safer on everyone is we'll just do a dedicated media section, which once again, not unprecedented when you talk about a public meeting, not unprecedented when you talk about government meetings. They have a dedicated media sections. Again, in the age of smartphones 2024, cameras can zoom in and do any and everything you need it to do. Going to once again reiterate the fact that we do have our own YouTube channel up at this point. Um, and the city clerk, as she said, she's working on the sound, that's cool. I, I, don't under, I don't foresee any reason why someone with a disability would not still be able to record from back there that, I mean, it's wheelchair, wheelchair accessible. You can hear, do, have whatever you need from back there in that dedicated section for tripods and things alike. If the issue is that we're trying to keep people safe, then cool, let's just go with the option that keeps people safe. Uh, we're complaining about seats and things being moved, but we also have to, again, our responsibility is to protect the city. And if we're protecting the city by making sure that any alleged recording is not happening of uh, private documents, the city attorney has a right to sit there. That is his designated seat. He should be able to sit there and pull up whatever he needs to pull up on his computer without worrying about whether or not it is being filmed for whatever reason. Uh, th these are not um, unreasonable requests that we're making here. This is not something that's stopping or violating the Open Meetings Act in any way. And so I'm, I'm not understanding uh, why there is so much pushback for trying to make sure that people do have a section where they are safe and free to record, where everyone else can walk up and down the side aisles and be safe and not have an issue. I, I, I'm, I don't know why we're pushing back on safety. I don't know why we're pushing back on private documents not being exploited. I, I, I don't understand the pushback for what is right, but I mean, it happens. It happens, and as far as us talking about um, meetings and things needing to go through meetings um, or go through different committees, government ops didn't happen because one of my colleagues who said it needs to go through government ops got up and left before government ops could happen. So it's not like somebody's trying to circumvent a process. Request you can't for, circumvent. Uh, Go ahead, Ms. Winfrey Carter. What's your question? request? Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, do you, uh, do you realize this was not on the Governmental Operations um, Committee agenda? So, so as, I, as I was stating, whether it was or not, you didn't stay for it. And also, we've had five months for you to read some rules and you haven't done that, so I'm not gonna believe you sat and read the Government Ops agenda before you needed to make this argument. And so I, I just want us to be for real. I can't about read. What's going, come on now, not back and forth. You're on my time. Stop interrupting Madam me. Madam Chair, you're request You're on my time. What's your request, Ms. Winfrey Carter? Do you realize I can't read? I didn't Thank say you. you couldn't read. I did read it. You, point okay. of order. Didn't read or comprehend what I just said. Go point, ahead. Point of what's order. your point of order? That's an improper request for information. That, I mean, it's fine. She's fine. That's how she felt. That's how she felt. It's fine. So, you know, I mean, she is the expert on when someone's being nasty. So I know she's being she knows she's being nasty right now. Um, as I was saying, Madam we Chair, are like you're not yes, being nasty. Absolutely right? not. I'm talking about my time. Do you, you keep realize you're always this nasty. is not a back and forth, Miss Winfrey Carter. Please focus and contain yourself like the adult that everyone else has to be when you're talking and it's not and you're not saying something they care to hear. Contain yourself. Everyone else sits and contains themselves and allows you to speak. I don't interrupt you. 
Please do not interrupt me. You had your time. This is my time. Let me take my time. Thank you. And so this has to go one way or the other. It's not that astonishing, Mr. Dumas, please. Um, we will not put this to a vote, Madam Clerk. Yes. Mr. Murphy? No. Priestley? Yes. Mr. Carter? No. Mr. Shaft? Yes. The vote is four yes, three no. The vote is four yes, three no, this fail. Let's go ahead, Councilman Pfeiffer. There's a motion on the floor to send 240107 and 241026 to council. Is there support? It's been moved and properly supported by the council person in the fourth ward. The council person in the eighth ward has the floor. Um, through you to the city attorney. Um, Mr. City Attorney, is, that, is there any conflict that we should be aware of for the um, Board of Appeals? Is there anyone else who would like the floor at this time? Anyone else in the first round? Anyone in the second round? All right, um, roll call, Madam Clerk, to send resolution 240107, appointment building code, Board of Appeals, Tom Hutchins, and Hutchins' son, and 240126, reappointment of zoning, Board of Appeals, Ramey Yelly, to um, council. Ms. Worthen. Ms. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Ms. Priestley? Yes. Mr. Carter? Yes. yes. Mr. Shad? Yes. Yes. Mr. Piper? Yes. Vote is seven yes, zero no. The vote is seven yes, zero no. Both of those resolutions have been moved to council. We cannot adjourn. We have a discussion. Has been moved and properly supported. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Okay. Ms. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Murphy. Yes. Ms. Priestley. Yes. Ms. Murphy Carter. Yes. 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 The vote is seven yes, zero now. No, the time is now 10.34 p.m. I call the Special Affairs Committee to approach.
Yeah. All right, so I can for all colleagues to please take their seats so we can get started. All right, the time is now, time is now 10.44, and the Sun City Council meeting is now being brought to order. Roll call, Madam Clerk. We have six members present, so um, now we'll move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. And Mr. Pfeiffer, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance?
Thank you. So now we'll move on to the prayer or blessing. But before we do that, we would like to honor anyone that may have transitioned. Do we have anyone to honor today? Anyone to honor? Okay, well, hearing none, I would just like to keep in, to keep in mind individuals um, from the second ward that may have transitioned really throughout the entire city of Flint. We know that somewhere out there, someone has lost a loved one, and we definitely would like to render our condolences to the grieving. So with that said, we will have a moment of silence. Anyone else would like to speak in the first round? Mr. Pfeiffer.
Yes. Any debate? Second round. Um, again, I, I support this going um, as soon as possible. So public hearings is where it will land. After public hearings, I will support it. All right, anyone else? Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Murphy. Uh, All right, anyone else like to speak? Okay, so seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and um, state my fact for the record. Again, um, I order without objection, go at the end. Um, if the faster we go ahead and get in here, pass this agenda, we can be on to the discussion item. Furthermore, I don't want to, um, as they say, have unequal treatment under the rules. So I can't vote to go against the rules for your discussion just because you want the discussion. So um, it'll be more than fitting to go right after resolution. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. Definitely, it's a great idea. But we want to make sure that things are done in order. And so in keeping with these rules, so that narrative cannot be true, that others try to paint about us going against rules for quote unquote allies or colleagues, I want to go ahead and make sure that we stay on target. So that's why I am not voting to have this any place else outside of where the discussion is at the end of the agenda. So, yeah. all right, with that being said, roll call, Madam Clerk. Mr. Murphy. Five yes, one no. So that discussion item will be placed after public hearing. All right, any other changes to the agenda? All right, no other changes. Madam Chair. Go ahead, Ms. Preston. Um, if I may, I do have a question for our city clerk. Okay. Um, I thought we were supposed to have minutes on this agenda. Can you address as to when those Um, I didn't want to put the minutes that are outstanding from 2023 are from May through December. I have those minutes. I just didn't want to get them to you with one day notice. The minutes that were supposed to be on this agenda would have been the minutes from March 25th. That would have been I didn't attend. We had some um, discrepancies about what should be on there. Uh, all the staff people weren't here, so I decided not to put those minutes on. But um, yes, the other minutes, um, I can send them now because there are a lot of sets of them. And, um, that was the hold up for that. Because we've been in violation of the open meeting on this for a while. Thank you very much. All right, so seeing that we don't have um, any more things agenda, we just get a quick for the minutes, so we don't have any minutes. So now we move on to the public hearing. Public hearing 230466.6, the public hearing about amending council rules. A 
public hearing on proposed amended rules under the meeting of the Flint City Council. Um, Attorney Kim, uh, would you like to give a little um, detail about the specific public hearing to the public body? Uh, certainly, I'll try to be brief. I think uh, the various issues here have been discussed already by this body. I think everybody in the body uh, knows what's going on here and what is uh, what is at issue. And I believe also members of the audience do as well. There are copies of the proposed rules um, located in the back of the room in case anybody wants to review them closer. So with that being said, we will now begin our public hearing and open up the floor to the first public speaker. So the first public speaker on the public hearing about amending council rules. Jan Marie Arbor, 7th Ward. On April 1st, 2014, City of Flint Emergency Manager Darnell Early issued an executive order cutting public speaking from five minutes to three. Now, nearly 10 years to that day, this council proposes to further reduce the public's voice to a mere two minutes. To learn about what other councils allow for public speaking, in Traverse City and Bay City alone, five minutes, or here on four. Those allowing three minutes include Lansing, Saginaw, Grand Rapids, Ann Arbor, Grand Haven, Muskegon, Battle Creek, Jackson, Burton, Flushing, Grand Lake Township, Davidson, and Howell. Only two minutes are allowed by Detroit and South Lions, which does allow for wrap up. Let's consider Detroit for a moment. Its full time council meets five days a week, 10 months a year, and serves a population in excess of 600,000. It seems reasonable that that major metropolitan area might have a two-minute limit, as it affords speakers five days a week at the lectern. However, this council's intent to allow only two minutes seems unreasonable by comparison. Solving the problem of lengthy council meetings by placing a muzzle over the mouths of people is not the solution to your problem with time management. All city councils have a responsibility to listen to residents. Restricting comments makes it less likely to hear, understand, and consider different points of view. Likewise, limiting your own council members' speaking time could translate to more decisions being made without the transparency required by our democracy. That said, there is no doubt that council meetings should be short. Where appropriate, council could consider other options, such as one, start meeting times on time, per the council rules. Two, schedule meetings and start earlier. Three, have the agenda and resolutions in hand by Friday to review before the next scheduled meeting. Four, accept no add-ons after 12 p.m. on Thursday. Five, do what can be done prior to committee meetings and during committee meetings rather than during city council meetings. Six, decide that no meeting will extend beyond 11 p.m. However, if business remains, then conclude that business the following day. Lastly, refrain from making comments that add no substantive value to council business. On behalf of the public, I ask that you maintain public speaking as it is and endeavor to find more effective ways to address time management concerns. Thank you. Next public speaker. Hello, I'm Howard Armando. For about two minutes, or 1,600 sound. It's been three years we only raised $3 on the people's check, and then in 24, we only raised 50 cents. Mr. And Mr. people's Mr. ID, Mr. what is the right thing? Please, please state your man to the public hearing about the council rules. This is about council rules. The council rules about you making laws as they go. That's unprecedented. See, you talking that stuff and well, we are under the Ju Judea law, on the Moses law. You got that? You sound like the woman that was prison held prisoners in 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 that high end of the camp, the basketball player. Stayed so long she came back and got a and she got divorced by, by her wife and got another one. And all that stuff you know they're trying to make new rules, who you think you is. That's that. Besides, besides an unprecedented 
you look, you unprecedented to see. You got that alert principal shack, call the shots, calling them all kinds of stuff in it, and nobody checking them. And talking about state humane and all that stuff. And, and talking about uh, industrial, tearing up the industrial, the woman doing, letting the woman take, when they come to the council, get let the woman take, take them time on up over there. Robert T. Long way and stuff and act like we the people so it's gonna be dope. And talk, and talk about she left out of the council, keep the public from that's a, a public. You jump it, you can't keep the public from speaking, like you really for Shaq and talking to the council lady that way. But you walk out at the end and all that stuff and there's no public here to represent Flint and y'all. Thank y'all is. You up there talking about state Jermaine. Huh, Jermaine, you want me to get some more, Jermaine, about you? In doing high school and high school and talk all that junk, he believed junk and woman you think you is. Somebody put your foot up through his ass with your with spikes on your foot. That's a big ass kid. Now take that. I'm about that one, Erica. Take that. That good job. All right. Anyone else would like to speak on this public hearing? Seeing no one else, this public hearing is now closed. So now we're moving on to public hearing um, number 240082.6, which is a public hearing about obsolete property rehabilitation exemption certificate for 2957 um, Car Street. So public hearing for an obsolete property rehabilitation exemption for 2957 Car Street by Waterfront Capital LLC. So Attorney Kim, could you please debrief the vote? Oh, of or or Ms. Ash, or whomever would like to brief the public on this specific resolution. Kim Mike Zing here from the property. And what, what's what's the name? Mike Zing. Mike Zing. 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 I'm sorry. Yes. Sir. Hello, Mike. Hi. Go ahead. I don't think that we should go for it. Them to speak before the public hearing. Um, well, this was to brief the audience on what this public hearing is about. That's what you're speaking about. Staff or council or attorney should do that. Oh, this is in the rules that say that the attorney should do that? It's just never happened before, so I don't know. All right, well, Mr. Mitchell, Mr. Mitchell, Mr. Mitchell um, please hold. Please be seated. We didn't call for the public yet. Proceed. Um, so we have the um, representation for the subject of this uh, public hearing here to brief us on this public hearing. Okay. Thank you. All right, so so just briefly, just tell us what what, your, what the public, what, pretty much about what the resolution is about, so the public can have an, an idea of what they're going to speak about. So just briefly, just tell us. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Council Member. It's a long day, but uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the city various department, like the planning department, uh, the building department. Um, but Mr. Sanford, yes, yeah. go, go ahead. I just want to thank you. Yeah, if you could speak a little closer to the mic, please. Okay, I'm going to skip. Okay, so uh, first of all, I'd like to say the thank you for the fairness department in the city of Frank. Uh, Frank. Uh, first of all, the uh, city planning department that to assist for on this project, and then also the city of building department. They work with us closely, try to get this project moving forward. Um, and now this is related to the obligations of the of the IEC. Um, so first of all, there's a little bit history for this uh, apartment complex. It was built in 1968, and um, it was shut down in 2016. Um, subsequently, it was foreclosed in May of 2017. Um, there's a couple of transits, uh, transactions up to it. Um, there's a history on the OPIEC or system as well. Uh, in, uh, back in year 2000,
certain, uh, I forgot the, the exact year, but uh, that a certificate has been awarded for the lake side of Amun. Um, Clear Capital was the owner at that time I and mean, hold that certificate. Um, the property was marketed uh, for sale with that certificate. Um, the, uh, afterward, um, you know, what kind of capital acquired uh, the property from Clear Capital LC? Uh, unfortunately, afterward, that OEPRC was revoked. Afterward, um, Waterfront Capital LC has been, the existing owner has been trying to uh, restate that certificate since. Um, the, the, there's a very benefit for that um, 2597 Cast Street uh, rehabilitation. Uh, so, we revitalize the open area, uh, increase the number of residents in the community in which the facility is situated. Uh, create employment, increase commercial activity, uh, retain employment, provide more needed residential housing. Um, for the second slide, the, this so is the side plan of this existing um, apartment complex. Okay, so Mr. Sam, so what, what I'm going to do, um, because we just wanted to... Sorry about that. Um, so we just want you to give a brief synopsis so the audience can have an understanding of what they're going to speak about. So I'm going to pause you and you can utilize your time during um, the public speaking. So I just wanted to be fair because I just wanted to make sure that the body knew what you were talking about and you can get to the specific during your time. I just have one more slide, so that's it. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I have one more slide, and that's it, the last slide. And um, this, this is just a, a general introduction uh, regarding this project. Okay. And um, the last slides, uh, I will talk about, you know, with your system of approving the OPI's applications, you have to eliminate one other vacant site. Size and uh, bring back all well located functional apartment complex. Um, all units will be renovated and become livable. Um, you will have a working furniture, kitchen door, window, heat, water, and power. You will be a well lighted um, gated community with a multi uh, multiple security camera. Um, once up and ready, uh, you will accommodate various must need community families and individuals. We, we will have tenant screening uh, for background and most of us credit check for everyone living in that apartment complex uh, for to ensure safety. Um, I guess that's all for this part. Thank you. Not a problem, Mr. Zhang. All right, so um, with that being said, this public hearing is now open. So, first public speaker, please. And we want to make sure that we are germane to the public hearing of all the off-street property we have in the certificate on Car Street. Are you through yet, baby? Are you going to let me talk? Okay, my name is Howard L. Mitchell. About the state that Mr. Gatt talked about in 1968, that's all the property, all the documents, this is all the property that they tore down over on Sussex, on Pearson Road, and we got this gate, the man that got the property, the, the preacher, the money to take care of the property and do what they want to do with it. And all that junkin' because some landlord didn't know how to, to, to keep the people in the side of the property and they kicked them all out. And now we here we go again to some some uh, some real estate like this trying to get back to Clinton and put the people some okie dokie trip again. Just like you. Oh, Dr. Lewis, you just you just one of them. They like the Southern War with their head down. And the school teacher look at them, protection while we people of Flint trying to get some uh, real house and not no pocket, no more 1968 pocket. Thank y'all is. We be fighting for human rights and put a statue out there to be like a man to build houses. Stanley had to do that jump. And then you had to stop them from building them. You're building houses so good, then he, had, he quit on his own. And now we got to build some Vietnam houses right on Second Hall Street because the soldiers still walking around homeless in that, you up there talking, and now this dude trying to make some. Stay, what? Stay tuned, America, to see who else.
don't want to talk about this stuff. Last week. Take that. All right. Anyone else want to speak during this public comment session? Anyone else want to speak during this public hearing session? So, um, so no one else? Everyone? All right. So with that being said, this public hearing is now officially closed. So now we'll move on um, to the five-minute discussion for um, Councilman Murphy's request. Excuse me, um, for Councilman Pfeiffer's request on behalf of Councilman Murphy. Thank you. Uh, please hold. All right, go ahead. Thank you. And um, thank you to my colleagues who supported us to be able to talk about this discussion. On April 25th, I think we'll be coming up on 10 years with the Flint water crisis. And I want my colleagues to um, just think about this as we look at possibly driving a resolution to fall out to address some of these outstanding issues. I want to go around with this right quick um, to let you guys know what we are dealing with that we need to still address. One, we got unfinished service lines that we have not completed 10 years later. Two, we have unfinished yard sidewalks and streets restoration that we have not completed. Three, we have unknown remaining wind funds that we don't know what we got there for. We have unfinished major main lines to be completed that is part of the agreement that we don't know what needs to be completed. Number six, residents is still waiting on lawsuit settlement. Seven, our water and sewer fund is facing a deficit. Eight, in-house in people homes, water lines is corroded that we have never addressed in 10 years. Nine, we had a five million dollar, I believe, I could be wrong on my numbers, that stock can came on file for the um, illegal water rate increase from the residents that did not get settled that is still out there. Well, 10, we have um, a projected probably 20% water rate increase that we probably want to be having to bring up to discuss in the near future in order to try to help bring the cost up, because we haven't raised the water rate yet since, I believe, 2015, not to be wrong. So therefore, that's part of the reason why we are dealing with a deficit in our water and sewer funds. But who want to pay for water that can't drink? That's not tap drinkable. The other one, we have um, just a lot of issues going on with the um, water testing. And I know um, Candace and Michelle, you guys at the um, Flint Development Center, you guys do water testing. And I'm not sure what that data look like, but we need to look at that data and see some things. So I'm asking if we can draft a resolution to present that is not more symbolic, but a resolution that will agree, address these issues. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yield the floor. So my colleague, is that what you said? Yes. Uh, I was just stating the resolution that I to it. Yes. Yes, so I'm asking if we could um, 
I would like to do a motion to put this on government ops. So I would, I would make a motion to move that we put together and have this as a discussion item on our next. That's for information. So, um, so um, let's see, will they? Mr. Hodgson. All right, go ahead, Mr. Hodgson. Um, Mr. Murphy, I think that you are the chair of government ops, so you can just add it. Um, through coordination with the Oh, he, he's not. It's Ms. Worthy. Okay, yeah, government I'm fine. Thank you. Mr. Hodgson, you're the chair of government ops. So, uh, how are we going to do this? Just put it on the comments. Match. Ms. Briggs, hold on one second. Um, oh, you go ahead, Ms. Briggs. I would recommend that to Mr. Murphy go ahead and get with the city attorney and bring a resolution forward that we can discuss at that time. And then we wouldn't have necessarily the the um, discussion item, any time limits. It would be during a, a meeting and it would have a, um, um, would have it, we, could, we can discuss it at that time and we've got something started. Rather than having a discussion item waiting and then the time, the April 25th de um, date will have been passed if we just talk about it. So if we just bring something forward concrete for, in, with, um, with the advice of, of, of one of our city attorneys, and then we can discuss it on that agenda. And we can pass it right then and there, not have to bring it back so that it's more timely to the 10 year anniversary. Um, All right. Um, Madam Chair. Um, go ahead, Ms. Michelle. I mean, we have 49 seconds left. I'm not sure if something else can happen before we go in here. Oh, so, uh, whoa. You, one second, Madam Clerk, you just reset that. Yeah, we only have 49 seconds for the discussion. I'm not five minutes per person. All right. Now, go ahead, Michelle. Um, I'm just trying to understand what specifically um, my colleague is trying to accomplish. Like what, because we're saying bring something back with some teeth, but what is the something, what is trying to be accomplished? I want my colleagues to get input on what this looks like. That's why it's kind of hard for me to draft the resolution without input from my colleagues. So I, I hear what my colleague, um, Julie, Please is saying what also yeah I, I need to hear from you. Gotcha. So ten seconds left. I know you mentioned the Flint Community Lab um, and that testing water. So I concur with everything you're saying as far as we're coming up um, on ten years and still having questionable water. That water testing is free for Flint residents, so we want to include that in the resolution we have. All right, seeing that it's um, five minutes up and this five minute discussion is now over. So now we will move on to public. What's your what was your There was no. Um, there was a motion or something to add this on government ops. So I'm not sure did we get that clear that this is going to be added or not. So like with permission, yeah. even the order that she, she ordered it. Yeah, she ordered it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, so um, now it's time for public speaking. First public speaker, Madam Clerk. Coffee place every day. And she always wanted to take a video with me. 
She had jumped off the porch and had her little friends in the video that she said she got home. She said, but she had to go to the doctor, and the doctor gave her six months, three months to live if she don't take this operation. She came back and she said, Mitchell, I got 30 more years to live thanks to my operation, she said. But in the meanwhile, she said, uh, Mitchell, I want to tell you, tell me something. You are, you got your own TV show. I didn't, I thought the woman was and she took me in the private room back there. And she saw that I was a uh, TikTok that made her uh, take that. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Since y'all talking about the cameras, y'all didn't help me with my money. Whoever talked about the thing. But she was supposed to learn me how to get the money, but people was calling her. They said, they ain't keep your hand up that girl. And they did was with like I'm. People like you people sitting there all this time. But she said, and then another white girl, Irish girl, go to my house, she said she got a 10-year-old son. And she be taking pictures, he won't make a beat. I said, wait a minute, don't tell me no more. I done got the, the cash beat. I said, he wants to go to church right Sunday to bust. I think uh so I'm glad that I don't know how to work a video phone. This all you gotta do is what the video? Now what the people's going out? She was the first. All of them gone. My others. When I was in the church, the stone front church of God Christ, they all go out one by one. Be about three people left over on Saint John Street. I didn't understand that. I so I just fall asleep went to the preacher get prayer again. And then when I get up, my foot be sleep, sleeping out, and there was even the preachers left. All that junk, I was only seven years old. I remember that stuff on set. All these in the school teacher yelling and stuff. But, like I say, I'm trying to cash. But I don't know. The people over in Baghdad, they, they see me talking about illiterate stuff. They'll, they'll kill you. You know, go over there on the Middle East. Come up, the infidel. Because you don't know how to rip your own cell phone to get your money. You're supposed to be dead. That's why. When Trump get back in the office, you gonna kill them all. Take that, America! Take that and put that on TikTok! Boy, that Trump! All right, next public speaker, Madam Clerk. Next speaker is Sonia Hankins. Come on, Tucky. What does that mean? Miss E. Taylor. And Doug Matthews. All right, so um, seeing that no was the last public speaker, now it's time for council response. Oh, Ms. Rose, sorry, we're <laughs> All right, so Ms. Priestley, would you like to respond? No. All righty, anyone else who would like to respond? Seeing that we have no one else to respond, I'll be the last um, to do so. Thank you to, all, to um, everyone that spoke, and um, we're looking forward to getting our official talk. So, go ahead. Madam Chair, make a motion to approve the consent agenda. All right, the motion for us to approve the consent agenda. Any support. support, supported by Mr. Fyfer? Madam Chair. Mr. Fyfer? I'd like to separate 2400082.1.
Any more separation?
You made it? Um, you still here? All right. Don't leave. I, I recall either Emily or Miss um, Park Screens saying that these were going to be four veterans. I remember that clearly. Um, was that under application somewhere? Uh, yes, there's a uh, meeting minutes that talk about veteran and the uh, senior. Uh, but that was uh, previous variants. And I'm sorry because I think tonight I have a really uh, clear documentation. I just have a uh, photocopy of that meeting minutes, so it must be. Might be a Okay. Um, I don't think I have any other questions other than do we have a dollar amount in here on which the taxes? Help, but 
what I don't want to see is a uh, land or an owner come from out of town and come and rehab a house or some apartments and we have issues over there and we really can't get in contact with a face-to-face -face because you guys are out of town somewhere and we don't have no way of contacting y'all that we have supported this over that you guys are requesting and then here y'all, we don't hear from y'all, see y'all, and that, that's one of my concerns with this property. When you were speaking, I really couldn't hear what you were saying, so um, I'm gonna have to do whatever I have to do on some research on what it is that you guys are trying to do. But I really couldn't hear you when you were speaking and I guess that's what the residents be saying when I be speaking. They can't hear me either, so I'm getting it back. Okay, so um, I totally understand your concern, and I believe that we have many years, more than 20 years of experience managing property, and I do understand that that is totally a concern if when there is a uh, out of town, you know. like to have a local manager in here, in the city of Flint. And the, actually, what's most important is that we're going to have, have someone that will be live on site. So they can, not only we have a secure camera, but they are there day and night. And we also are not tolerate anybody with any kind of uh, substance abuse. Um, so we do. So do you guys got guaranteed secure funding to get started to work on these, or are y'all waiting? And we we gonna pull something, and we we have to be waiting on you guys to get funding. Uh, no. So we are waiting for for the resolution on this uh, on this. Agenda. Once this one is approved, then we can move ahead. We already we we already have invested. So you guys do not have secure funding yet. No, we do have investor that interested in moving forward. We is, yes, we do. Do you have something right that the money is there for y'all to get started? Right. That's why last time when they talk about when we can get it uh, completed, and we say it uh, sometime next year. Because I don't want to see us approve something and we don't see no movement. No, that's not the case. So there's a deadline. Why are you guys projecting to be completed? I believe we will be uh, sometime next year in the in October and November time frame. Next year. Next year around? Like October. 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 Anyone else would like to? Madam Chair. Go ahead and just read. So attached to the resolution is um, the economic development provision minutes, as well as the zoning board of appeals minutes. And um, the, in reading the minutes, the commissioners seem to have the same concerns that we are asking um, about right now. And um, that there, the um, CBA board feels that um, having it renovated will solve some of the security issues and the vagrant issues and, and all of that. And of course, that should handle it because it will be occupied. And um, so, based on what I've seen in their applications, I am all in favor of. of um, getting more housing units. It does say in here, I think, something about, um, I just read it, was about the um, um, veterans, that there was supposed to be veterans, let me see. I'm just trying to, like, point, really point of information. Oh, here it goes. Is the council person oh. in the fourth ward? Well, but wait a minute, we will not acknowledge. Oh. 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 O
So I want to hear what's your information. Okay, is the, is the um, councilwoman in the fourth and board aware that they are trying to make a variance to uh, having so from it being for seniors and veterans, because it's currently for seniors and veterans to have an opening yeah, up for everybody. I'm reading that now, that's why I saw the okay. I saw the word veteran. It's page 18 of the um, of the PDF. So you know I'm I'm all for redevelopment. And we, especially in that area, um, he got, I would consider it shared with Mr. Murphy. <laughs> um, I, we definitely need good housing in that area. Um, so I'm not having a problem with this. Um, I would like, I mean, we have a, um, Apartments being renovated on the corner of Gabriel and Richfield Road that are looking really good, the ones that are complete. And I would love to see. I, I've been in this when I worked for the Census Bureau as um, doing the American Community Survey. Yeah, I, I would love to see this renovated, and I think it would make it safer for the residents in the area, and um, especially the trailer park behind it. So, thank you very much, Judy. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah. seeing that we do see this a beautiful property, and um, it is kind of a waste to have it abandoned. Yes, thank you. Right. Anyone else would like to speak? Can try. Anyone else like to speak? Seeing no one out here, last person. So, I have a question, and seeing that I am a uh, big proponent of neighborhood associations. Are you going to have a uh, homeowners association within this development? I'm sorry, I don't really understand your questions. Okay, but, so are you going to establish a neighborhood association slash homeowners association to, uh, to keep a lot of these issues at bay that I hear my colleagues are referring to? Because from my experience, I've noticed that when you have an active association, homeowners or neighborhood association, it eliminates, or I'll say it really deduces the, uh, the, the vacancy, you know, the, the uh, lack of disregard for property. I'm not sure, are these going to be rental, or are these going to be um, owned, no um, purchase, or are these going to be both rent and own? What's the vision? I believe it will be uh, a rental apartment. And to be talking about the home association or the neighborhood watch, um, I did personally oppose to all the neighbors around that property. We have a good discussions about you know what do they want to see, and we exchange like contact information. If they have any person have any issue. Uh, they can get a hold of us. So it's not, so we are kind of working as a group. Um, I mean, we know each other from the neighbor around here. And the, the main thing is like, we want this place to come back and then, you know, kind of coexist with the rest of the neighbor. And we want to make it to the safe place. Because right now it's vacant, people can go in down there and do whatever they want to do. But if you have people who live on the side, and then people come in here illegally, you know, there's an eye, a year, all around. So that price will come back fully. Okay, and just want to remind you that the notes section, it speaks on 50 parking spaces. How many units again? I think 44. 44? Okay, so yeah, that's So, this one of my suggestions is definitely not a prerequisite. But our, our goal is to make sure that we have involved communities. So, I think that but within your development, it would be a great idea to consider you know, starting uh, you know, a neighborhood association within the group of neighbors that you kind of put together. Because um, I think that. Uh, make your development thrive and not 
fail. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, yes. The uh, neighbor that we we talk to each other, we change we change phone number, and the first thing is like we want to make sure that you know there's no trouble that we bring to the neighbor. That's why we change the phone number and then we talking to each other. Okay, yeah, so I'm um, so great that we talked. We got it'd be awesome if you all establish something formal because it has been the precedent set in this city when neighbors unite and when they work together for a better neighborhood, you have a better outcome. Yes. And it's an investment for you. So I trust you not before us to lose money. I, I trust that you're not trying to try to redevelop these things just to have people tear them up. No. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, so so that's just um, my thoughts on that. So with that being said, we move to the second round of discussion. Anyone in the second round? Yes. Mr. Murphy. Um, how, how many bedrooms in these apartments? Uh, most of them are one bedroom. Most of them. I think there's only a few that's only two bedroom, but most of them are one bedroom. Most of them are one bedroom? Yes. Okay. Um, so, asbestos, because the damage is shut down, are, are you going to get it tested? The pipes changed out, the plumbing lines? Um, what is your plans for that? So, uh, everything will be uh, goes through renovations. Um, most of them, most of the units are vacant. Um, so uh, you'll be cleaning out, you know, top to bottom, bottom um, the floor will be changed out, you know, uh, all those will be, uh, you, once it's ready, it will look like fresh new. All right. All right, anyone else in the second round? Mr. Piper? Um, through you to the uh, city attorney. The, this won't bypass any codes, correct? Not that I'm aware. So, approving this won't exempt them from any codes or any rental codes? I, I'm not aware that it would, but I'd have to look into that question. I really don't know. Um, and I, I know that the Zoning Board of Appeals have conditions um, that they put in the FedEx regular meeting minutes of cameras and being fenced in and gated. How do we enforce that? That actually was a matter of fact that has been architecturally drawn and then work with the city uh, building department and they have reviewed it, you know, it's in, in the drawing. So, and the gate, you know, all those things, all those are in detail architecture drawing. So it has been implemented in the drawing.
Sí, ya está. To the vote is 6 yes, 0 no. To the vote is 6 yes, 0 no. Resolution 2400082.1 passes. Now we're on to resolution 240. Yeah. Oh, 230466.2. Yeah. Ms. Priestley. Make motion to approve 230466.2. All right, and the motion to approve. Uh,
So my question is, since this is a special item and this must be an item, why don't we um, just leave it, just leave it to special affairs? I don't understand why we want to send it back with the probability of not even having the, the meeting. Why don't we just leave it here? Why do we have to send it somewhere else? So that's my question. That's why I want people to send it back. So um, it will be at the pleasure of the body. So we will um, call for a second round. Anyone else in the second round? Okay, well, I appreciate that. So here that there's no second round, I'll just go ahead and call for the vote to send the rules back to government house. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mr. Piper. Yes. Ms. Worthen. Yes. Ms. Lewis. No. Mr. Murray. Yes. Ms. Priestley. Yes. Ms. Chad. Yes. Five, yes, one no. Yes, one no. Wait a minute, ma'am. So, uh, so that resolution has been sent to government house. Motion to the clerk. Supported by Council 74. Roll call by the clerk. Ms. Worthen. Yes. Yes. Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Priestley? Yes. Mr. Bass? Yes. Mr. Byron? Yes. Vote of six, yes, zero, no. Vote of six, yes, zero, no. Vote of 58, adjourn. Our doors are locked. I was locked out of the building. Thank you. 
little mile around town. Yeah. Oh, that is Oh, that's all I got. <laughs> Good night, everybody.